I get you um, just to have a seat here. Would you like me? Do you mind? You can take my hand this off. What's that? Can you take my hand this off? Um, <clears throat> as soon as um, the detective gets in here, Detective Flores, he can take those off for you. I think that's what he told you anyway, that he'd allow you to have your hand cast off. Travis's case ever since it happened mm -hmm. okay and I know exactly when it happened when he was killed I know a lot of details and just recently we found quite a bit of evidence and I'll discuss that with you the main thing that I'm looking for though is answers on why certain things happened why they went so far and also to get your statements. Okay. <clears throat> um, a lot of details on this case that haven't been released to, to the public and not even to Travis's family. And those details are known only by us and the person who did it. Okay, and, and that's one of the reasons I'm here is because I believe that you know some of these details. Okay. And I think you can help us. I would love to help you in any way that I can. Okay. Um, because we're here at the police department, the sheriff's department here in, uh, was it Siskiyou County? Siskiyou. That's what it's called. Okay. Um, and you're considered uh, under arrest or detained. You're not free to go. And I'm a police officer. I have to read you your rights. Okay. I'm sure you've heard them on TV. You, uh, you know, I have to read them off this little card here, but they're pretty much the same, and I'll explain them to you as we go, okay? Let's see. This is July 15, 2008, correct? Yes. Let me see what time it is here. It's 10.01. In the morning. This is case number 2008-161-0844. Okay. You do have the right to remain silent. Okay, anything you say may be used against you in a court of law. You have the right to the presence of an attorney to assist you prior to questioning and to be with you during questioning if you so desire. 
if you cannot afford an attorney, you have the right to have an attorney appointed for you prior to questioning. Do you understand these rights? Yes. <clears throat> and what I'm going to do is just ask you some questions, ask you what you've been doing, um, you know, certain dates, what you were up to. Yeah. Um, you mentioned you were traveling on some of these dates. I travel. I want to kind of clarify some of these things. And, uh, you know, if, if there's a question that you don't want to answer, you don't feel comfortable, you can say no, you know. And, or, you know, you can elaborate as much as you want. It, it's completely up to you. It's at your speed. Mm -hmm. I don't want to pressure Is you. Is this recorded at all, or um, should we? I, mean, I, don't, I don't know I don't if there's know. a recording or something. I don't know if these are voice recorders. I noticed them. If they have video, if they have audio, or they're... batteries, or what? I don't think they're on. Okay. Yeah, I haven't touched those or anything, but, uh, oh, okay. um, I mean, they're not on, so what I want to do is just get to the bottom of it. Everybody wants to know, okay, and, you know, so I'm going to ask you some questions. You can voluntarily answer them if you want, okay? Mm -hmm. Is that cool? Yeah, that's yes. fine. There was some question about you being, um, well, let's, let's start with this. What have you been up to since, um, since Travis's death? What, what have you been doing? Um, well, I've been working. Mm -hmm. I haven't been really working in prepaid legal. There's not a whole lot um, here in this marketplace, which is... It's kind of small here. It's small here, and really that, sh that could be seen as an opportunity. Um, rather than um, a hindrance, because that just means the market is, is untapped in a larger way. So I could have if I wanted to, but I have, I'm have i kind of like a deer in the headlights when it comes to prepaid legal, and I, kinda, I just have a fear of just approaching people. Um, so I've been working at a Mexican restaurant in the north end of town. Um, I've been... I've been kind of in a daze, at least for the first few weeks. Um, like everybody, you know. Yeah. Um, I know that a lot of people have been posting on Facebook really nice things, you know, and memories. And at one point, I was like, well, maybe I should do that. So I posted this thing, and I just set all my memories. And I realized, looking back on it, that it was kind of, it kind of sounded immature. So it's more of like my dear Travis kind of letter. And so I took it down because... More personal? Yeah, some of it was details, <clears throat> but more personal. Not too personal, nothing inappropriate. Just, um, I just felt funny. I think because I'm a photographer, I tend to communicate more through pictures. So I posted a ton of pictures that I had of him. Um, and I have a ton more that I just can't access right now. And videos and things that I know his family would want. but. Um, so I posted pictures and I took that down and I posted something last week. But other than that, I've been on Facebook and MySpace a lot, looking at his profile, looking at his pictures, reading things um, about his obituaries and um, any news updates. And you know, there's Legacy.com where you can write something about yeah, him. Yeah. Um, I've seen a lot of those postings. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't realize until I actually spoke with Ryan Burns. He he told the guy that's in Utah, uh -huh. and we've been talking a lot. And we try not to talk about that because it's kind of like, Ugh. and plus Travis is my ex-boyfriend, but at the same time he's my friend. So while I'm mourning my friend, how do you talk to your new potential possible maybe person that you might start dating about your friend, even though he was your ex-boyfriend? So it's kind of a gray area. Uh -huh. I try not to talk about him too much, but he comes up a lot. Um, and it was through him that I learned that he said, you know, if you come out to Utah, things are really weird because everyone is everyone thinks that you yeah. could have had a, um, a hand. And I've talked to a lot of people, and everybody's pointing a finger at you. I know. You know, everybody is saying, I don't understand what happened to Travis. I don't know who killed him. But you need to look at Jody. And sometimes the simplest answers are the correct ones. And that's one of the reasons I started looking at you a little bit closer. And over the last month or so, I, I've, 
I've gotten into Travis's life, talked to all his friends, his family. I got a really good understanding of who he is now. And I got a very good understanding of your relationship with him. And I'm kind of just putting two and two together. Well, I and, and it and it kind of matches. So one of the reasons I'm here is to talk to you to figure out what was going on between you two? What I know the relationship that you guys had was of convenience sometimes. Obviously, you weren't boyfriend and girlfriend anymore, mm -hmm. but you were still having a sexual relationship. Which does his you know, family know about that? Just curious. No, just his family doesn't know anything. Okay. Yeah. I just I'm, I'm interested in protecting his mm -hmm. how he's remembered as well, and you know he's he was very. He was, um... Well, I'm sure if Travis could speak right now, he wouldn't care what people thought about him. Because they knew who he was. Okay? I, a sexual relationship here or there, because of the fact he was a member of the church, really doesn't matter. In a the, couple in, times in I asked him. a whole range of, of things. Yeah. Okay. I think in the broad scope of things that that could be right. I just think that the reason I care about that is because he was adamant about that. And a couple times we prayed about it, didn't work, or we didn't stick to our, you know, our guns on it. And um, one time a girlfriend of mine just said, why don't you just go to your bishop and talk and, and ask Travis the same. And I talked to him about it and he got really angry. He said, I've already had problems with this in the past. I'm embarrassed by it. I don't want to go to my bishop. And so we just kind of stopped for like a few weeks. And then that must have been in, I think that was August. And then it just resumed. Well, the, the way Travis thought by, you know, getting into his head and everything that he's written in his journals and um, everything I found out about him, he, he truly had feelings for you. And for some reason, he felt that the relationship between you and him was somewhat unhealthy, but he couldn't stop it. And I assume that's probably maybe the same way you felt about him or... It's probably, Maybe you didn't understand why he didn't believe it was healthy. No, I, I didn't think it was healthy either, spiritually at least, and probably emotionally, but mostly spiritually. And I think that kind of once you have something that's not healthy spiritually, it filters through all aspects of your life. Um, it's it's one of the main, it's one, like there were three main reasons I moved back to Irica, and one was I was in financial dire straits. Um, I was not getting ahead. I was not, I just, things were not working. Everything in Arizona was like, except for the wonderful friends that I made in my ward um, and the opportunity. It's like the Mormon land of opportunity there, which is awesome. But except for all that, like every sign was pointing, just to, just go, you know. You know, I wasn't able to hold a job and that had never happened before. Um, it, you know, it, too much of my my nightlife can, was, was about him, you know. He would text me and, hey, I'm getting sleepy, dot, dot, dot. Just a bunch of Z's and that was his, code to like come on over kind of thing it's, it, the coast is clear you know so um you know and that was just i lived five minutes away 10 maybe 10 depending and it was just too convenient and too easy and it was fun and we had fun when we were together and so it wasn't healthy and i totally agree with that um so that was one of the re well financially i wasn't doing well i missed my family i moved away um shortly after high school and I come back to visit but I realize over the years I've missed out on a lot of things with my little brother and sister. I missed out on just uh, their karate or their baseball or cheerleading or just whatever and um, and my dad is not doing well. He doesn't think he has very long to live but he always says that. It's been that way for like a decade. He's still here, thank goodness. Um, my grandparents aren't getting any younger, and I just have an awesome family. And I wanted to be able to just be here for a little bit and regroup um, financially. I owe my parents a lot of money, and I owe my grandparents a lot of money, and I owe friends money. I owe I owe my um, the guy that I bought a house with. I owe him a lot of money. He doesn't ask me for it, but I intend to pay him back because he really footed the bill on the mortgage for a few months. Um, and the third reason, and I like to put this third because I like to think that second to those reasons I would have been strong enough somehow, but the third reason was to put a distance, a physical distance between Travis and I because 
I know that he really liked Mimi, and he said he did. Um, he just, and I kind of felt guilty. I mean, I know they weren't dating, but I just felt guilty somehow, and I didn't know Ryan at the time. I met him in, in March at, um, in Oklahoma City, and it was just brief, and I remember seeing him and saying, oh, I really want to go say hi to him, but he was surrounded by people, and it was, he was kind of unapproachable. Um, and he says he remembers meeting me, too. And it wasn't until Zion, my friend, um, texted me, and you know, I think I told you that. Yeah. I was and this notes. is all after. This uh, is all after. Broke up. Oh yeah. Broke up with Travis. Everything was all over. But I'm yeah. As far as the timeline, we broke. I well, it was kind of a mutual thing, but I, I sort of more broke up with him. Yeah. Um, and I it was hard to do because I really loved him, but I just realized that without trust can't have anything and I had violated his is that, trust. Is that the main reason you guys broke up? Is the trust? Trust. I think that there's not, no... Not that the relationship was unhealthy because of the uh, you know, sexual activity, um, duty, but just that you guys couldn't trust each other. I think that, and this doesn't make it right, I think that, you know, being a convert, you know, I've had, I've, I've been, I've had a couple of serious relationships before where I was, where I was intimate with a few mm -hmm. people. And it's kind of silly, but I used to always joke that um, regardless of what the Bible says, and yes, I'm Christian, I just live my life by the Ten Commandments, and that's my, those are my rules, da 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 you know, thou shalt not this or that, but it doesn't say thou shalt not mortgage. So I just, <laughs> I just used to joke about that, and that's, it's a bad philosophy. Um, I think that with Travis, um, there, was part, there was a part of me that felt really guilty, because there was something inside that thought, you're... you're you know, this is nice for instant gratification, but you're destroying what you could have with Travis. And that's why we, we did pray about it. I remember we knelt by his bed once. And um, and surprisingly, he suggested it. Normally, you know, we would I would suggest that we pray before we go on a trip or yeah. before we eat, if we're alone. That was kind of unusual for him, huh? Yeah, because he was very resistant to prayer with me. I mean, I think in church it would have been fine, and I feel that maybe because we, we were driving away the Spirit constantly, um, or maybe he felt that by inviting the Spirit, we, he would feel guilty about later on in the evening, or I don't know what the deal was. Or the excuse he used was, because I'm a convert, I need more practice saying prayers. He's like, so I'd say, will you say a prayer? He's like, why don't you say a prayer? Um, why don't you say a prayer? Why don't you say a prayer? So we'd go back and forth. and. I don't know, until, I don't know, it was just one time when I was on a trip with Hav at Havasu Pai, we were all getting on the road, and I think Dan, it was with Dan Freeman and his sister Desiree, and they were all like, um, Jody, will you say a prayer? And I said, sure, and, and Travis was like, <laughs> anyway, I, I didn't want to argue with them. So, um, anyway, what was I saying? Well, he's, um, you know, the whole trust issue keeps coming back into my mind. That was um, the big he, reason. He was, a, he was a big time flirt. And that's the one thing everybody says about him. He flirts a lot. Um, does he mean anything by it? No, not really. That's just who he is. Um, he did have, you know, girlfriends here or there. And he was at a point in his life where he wanted to really start settling down. He felt like he needed to kind of grow up. Mm -hmm become a husband, become a father, you know, those, that time had come and he felt that that time had come and gone and he was falling behind. He told me that too, he said he felt um, like his time was running out and I, I told him that, you know, despite the fact that he's not going to be in a singles ward very much longer, he still has a lot of options, he's still a very eligible bachelor and he, he just didn't see it that way. He was like, you don't understand. He was like, that might be true, but my chances are severely reduced once I turn 31. It was like this ticking well, time bomb. finding a, a good Mormon girl, you know, was was difficult because in, in that church, you know, that most of the girls get married in early 20s. Yeah. You know. He said he didn't want to marry a girl in her early 20s because he said that he noticed a lot of pattern in the church with girls that married between 19 and 24, so to speak, would, would you know, they'd start having babies and, and growing their family, and um, then they would look at their single girlfriends who were still having fun with no responsibilities, and they would regret getting married. And I think if you're strong in the church, it's not yeah. so much a problem, but... Yeah, depends on who you surround yourself with, too.
you surround yourself with the right people, you know. It's a different story. But, you know, that's where he was. And did you guys ever discuss possibly getting married or anything? Is when that... we were dating, we did. Okay. Once we broke up, he brought it up. He actually proposed to me a lot of times, but he wasn't serious. Um, I think he was, he was serious once, and it was when we broke up. And um, that was really hard because we were on the phone, and it was just it, like none of that stuff should be done on the phone anyway. But I was hundreds of miles away, and um, I told him that I loved him. We didn't say I love you during our relationship, but we said it afterward. It was weird. Okay. Um, I, uh, um, I said, you know, this isn't breaking up with him on the phone wasn't really the way I wanted to do it, but it was kind of a situation that had just come to a point where it just couldn't be ignored anymore and well, let's move to after the breakup oh okay what uh, what kept you in Mesa at that point I actually moved to Mesa a few weeks after we broke up really mm -hmm. okay. I mean as far as the timeline goes but I mean if you want to call it our official breakup shortly thereafter it's like we were still seeing each other. so you guys were seeing each other but it was a long distance type relationship. It was always long distance when we were officially dating. We didn't re date. We dated from about the beginning of February to about the end of June. So okay. February, March, April, May, June, about five months total. Okay. In June of 2007, you guys broke up and, and then June you moved 29. to Mesa. Um, yeah, I moved to Mesa sort of. Most people, was, when they break up, they kind of go their I own know, way. I know, and it was, and we, the plans were already in order for me to move there. Um, I was already speaking with a friend who was, you know, was going to be her roommate, and I was her roommate for a short time. Mm -hmm. um, she's kind of flighty. She's a great girl, though. Um, I had talked to Travis about maybe going to Southern California instead. Okay. And... He's really, he's he's really persuasive. He persuaded you to stay there in Mesa. He's he kind of was playing up all the advantages if I did come to Mesa, mm -hmm. and if I did, you know, um, he said, you know, it's, it's it's a great place. We could still see each other and hang out on occasion. Um, this church is very strong. You know, you'll you'll make a lot of friends. And I already knew all this stuff prior because I we talked about that, um, you know. And so I went ahead and just made the move. It sounded at the time like a good idea. And you guys continued to kind of see each other at that time. Yeah, at the time I was sort of living more across town, over by Greenfield. Do you know where that is? Yeah. Uh, it was up Greenfield near Broadway. Greenfield and Broadway were the nearest cross streets, and that's where the girl that I was originally talking with, we, I moved in with her. Yeah, it's kind of far from. Yeah. Travels, yeah. Um, the thing about her, and, and just to give you a background of why I moved suddenly, um, she approached me the weekend after I got there and said, hey, she knocked on my door, can I talk to you for a second? I said, sure. And she moved in with her boyfriend, um, and they were engaged. Okay. And she said, hey, I just wanted to let you know that Scott and I went to Vegas last weekend to tie the knot. And I was like, really? She's like, yeah, we haven't told anyone, but we didn't want to live in sin. So we're going to, and she had already been sealed in the temple once and was waiting for her cancel. Her, yeah. her, to, her you know, sealing to be Yeah, to be canceled. canceled. So they were going to have a civil wedding um, on the beach in Oregon. And they did that the following, uh, uh, the following weekend. And she told me that on a Monday or Tuesday. It was the beginning of the week. And she said, the reason I'm telling you that is because I'm getting married this weekend. And I have to go out of town a few days ahead of Scott, you know, to make arrangements. And now that he's a married man, we don't feel it's right that you be here in the house. Yeah. She's like, I don't want to inconvenience you, but is there any way you could stay with somebody else or just find another place? At the time, I was waiting on a house in Gilbert because I already knew they were getting married, so I was kind of looking anyway. And there was a great girl named Brenda, and she was waiting on her keys for the mortgage to go through, and it was a great ward, it was a great house, and it was brand new. Um, construction and all that it was really nice um, but she didn't get her keys for months and months I think she's in the house now but I don't know I haven't talked to her um, so I scrambled I went to the Institute I wrote down a bunch of phone numbers I called them all a lot of them I got voicemails um, one girl that answered her name is Tiffany and she knew Travis and she was at his services in Arizona and um, 
as well. And we've just remained friends, sort of, like on MySpace and Facebook and that kind of thing. But she said, hey, sorry, that's an outdated posting. I forgot to take it down, but go to this website. So LDSHousing.net, I went there. I made three phone calls um, for the places that were within my price range. I didn't think to look where they were. Um, the one girl that called me back, her name was Shannon Derricott. She said, yeah. here's my place, here's the directions. Go ahead and go out and come see the house. It was available, so we did. No, go ahead. You have to get that? No. Okay. Um, so I moved out there, and when Travis found out it was so close to him, he freaked out about it. And I made sure to check that it wasn't, that that we wouldn't be in the same ward. And it was within his ward boundaries, but it was also within another single's ward boundaries. So of course I'm gonna go the other one, because it would just be kind of weird. I mean, I didn't know about him and Lisa at first. Uh -huh. So I, I don't know if they were even dating at that time. I don't know what their whole timeline was. Um, but it still would have been weird. And it wouldn't have made Travis now, very During that time that he was seeing Lisa, did you continue to, to see him as well? Yeah, and I didn't know that he was seeing her. Uh, yeah. But he would call you and have you come over. Yeah. I know there was a time when you, I guess, were cleaning his house too for, for extra money or something. Yeah, I did he that. He hired you. Yeah, I did that because um, he knew that I was struggling and he, he's like, I've been doing the math. And that happened pretty much right on. I mean, that started, that started in August. He's like, I've done the math and I feel that I can be more protective. Um, my time is more valuable than X amount of dollars per hour. So why don't I pay you this per hour and I'll work and you can make a little bit of money. So that helps. That makes sense. Was that was around time. the same time, time frame as uh, the move and back and forth? It was forth like a few weeks after the move. Okay. I was still living in, with Rachel, okay. over on Greenfield. Okay. Okay. Before, when that started. And he sent me this picture and he's like, this is your uniform, have it by Friday or Thursday or whatever. And it was this French painting. thing. I was like, <laughs> no. Yeah, that's him, typical. Yeah. <laughs> like I said, he's, he's a very flirty guy. And, uh, he is. Now, Obviously, the Rachel relation or um, not Lisa? Rachel, Lisa relationship didn't work out, and um, I mean, there was a time period he really wasn't seeing anybody, and then Mimi came into the picture. Um, what did you think about her? And that I didn't know a lot about her. She seems like a really nice girl. He showed me her picture on Facebook. You know, I don't think she had a lot of pictures on there. Um, he said that he's not sure why but he's pretty sure that she could be it. Uh -huh. And I was happy for him. Um, I didn't find out about Lisa. This conversation you had face to face with him? Yeah, or? yeah, it was in okay. his room. Um, and he had his laptop, you know, just on his bed. Um, I didn't find out about Lisa until after we broke, we had this conversation where we decided to all just come clean. Uh -huh. um, and that was quite a conversation um, because I was never unfaithful but there, you know, when we started dating that timeline around February, the reason I remember February is because he had told me in December, you know, go date other people kind of thing. And so I did. Um, it was January 10th that I went on a date with um, my friend John for lunch. We just went out and had sushi. Nothing romantic happened. Yeah. We didn't hold hands. We didn't kiss. We, we think we hugged. Yeah. And I guess it was considered a date because he asked me and I accepted and he paid for it. Um, and that was in Pasadena. Yeah, if you pay for it today. Yeah, that was in Pasadena. And the following evening, I went out with my friend Abe, and we he drinks, and he just got like um, a Maker's Mark, I think, is what is his drink. And I got cranberry juice. And we just talked forever about it. He talked about politics, which well, is... Well, these guys in the Marine Corps or something? They were both in prepaid legal. Um, John <coughs> Dixon is not in prepaid legal anymore. He's moved on to other ventures. No, but the, uh, the Marine Corps, are they in the service at all? No. Okay. Abe is kind of, he's a little bit older, he's just sort of a businessman. Okay. Has a background in, I don't remember, production or And something. this is during the time that you guys were broken up or this still was, kind of going I'm out? sorry, this is before we started dating. Okay. The reason I say this is because he told me a few times, he told me during that conversation too, that he's like, you seem to have a very convenient timeline for when we started dating. Because I, I used to ask him, like, when did we actually start dating? Because mm -hmm. I figured if we ever made it to a year, we might as well celebrate it. Mm -hmm. um, and he's like, I'm not really sure. And the reason I think it was February 2nd is because we, do you know of Chris and Sky Hughes? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I used to spend a lot of time at their house. And, um, you know, they're a wonderful family. And uh, Sky was, she she's somebody that I really opened up to. And, you know, um, I told her a little bit how I just wasn't sure about Travis at the time. And, 
and I, I wasn't sure what was going on there, and she wrote in this long letter, or she didn't write a letter, Travis wrote the letter, but she um, kind of got on his case, and, and I was, and they told me all kinds of things about Travis that I wasn't aware of. What kind of stuff are you talking about? Um, they said, if I don't get away from Travis, I'm going to become just like Deanna, which is his other ex-girlfriend. Yeah. Um, you know, do you want to waste six years of your life waiting for him? Because um, he can't come in. He still tells Deanna, I love you, and I was like, what? You know, and that kind of thing. Yeah, and, and I truly believe he, he, he does love her still. Oh, he but does. He Travis had, had a, he's what you call a player. You know what that means. He, he kind of pulls girls in, anybody, but he can't make a commitment. He portrays himself to be a certain way, but he's really not. Okay, he portrays himself to have a lot of money. He's not. He have a lot of money. <laughs> he's got a lot of things. He yeah. told me the first night that I, the, the, sec, the first night that I met him, or was the second night. It was at the MGM Grand. He invited me to this executive director banquet. And, you know, he was kind of talking about what his earnings were the last year and how he almost made his six figures and that kind of thing. And then he leans in and he goes, in this business, you have to show off your money a little bit. And in prepay legal, it is. People want to yeah. see that you're actually being successful. So, you know, That's he's done a good job about, with that. It's about making money. Yeah. yeah. Um, anyway, what was I saying? Oh, so Chris and Sky were just, they, by the end of the conversation, they started calling me Deanna. And I was just like shocked. I didn't want to, I certainly, the last thing I wanted. How did you feel about that? Um, my biggest concern was losing respect in their eyes because I really, really looked up to them. And um, I thought it, I would have laughed it off and I thought it was kind of funny, but my big, but I feared inside that I was losing their respect. Mm -hmm. um, so when I talked to him next, I was like, uh, you know, what do I do? What do I say? And he ended up writing this long, long, long letter to Sky saying, I just got off the phone with a very reluctant to talk to me, Jody, you know? And um, she wrote back saying something to the effect like, you know, I wouldn't want my sister to date you. Um, why do you kiss Jody in the dark and then act like you guys aren't even together in the daytime? Things like that. That's a good statement because that kind of sums up the relationship that you had with him. It seems like Especially he liked you, he loved you. He wanted to be with you, but he was he was reluctant to make a, a, a commitment first off. And truly, he didn't think that you were marriage material. And I don't know why not. I mean, I see you. You're 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 a wonderful girl. You're you know you're struggling. You're, you're trying to, to to make your way through life. And I don't see why you guys couldn't have made it. I you think know? we're just we have. We have very different philosophies on a lot of ways. Um, we would argue about the dumbest things, and like he would just want me to admit that he was right, and I would happily do that. Well, that's but a it, man thing. That's and I would. It, I should have just known better and admitted that. I eventually learned how to argue with Travis, and it's yes, Travis. my wife. She's like, okay, fine, you're right. Yeah. You know, eventually, said, that's yeah. what it, what I began to do with him. It's like the more I just agree with him, the sooner the <clears> argument gets over, and the sooner we can make up. And the make up was always great. Um, but um, there were so many times where I just couldn't wrap my mind around what he would, I could, but, but I would try to get him to do the same for me. Like there was a time when I broke down on the way to LA once when I was going to watch Chris Hughes do a training. Um, and this was January, um, mid-January maybe of 2007. And my, my car got a flat tire. So I had at the time roadside assistance because my car was still under warranty. And they, pulled, they went to take the car in to change the tire and realized that when they sold me the car, they didn't give me the wheel lock key. Oh, so yeah. for anti-theft, there was wheel locks. So I had to get a hotel room. I had to get my car towed. It was a big nightmare. Um, and I was kind of hungry. It was dinner time. It was 7.38, and it was dark because it was January. Um, and the tow truck guy said, you know, there's a Denny's two blocks down here, and there's a Jack in the Box there. And he was driving me to the motel. I said, is there an IHOP around? Because I really like IHOP. He's like, yeah, but it's kind of like five miles back in the other direction. I was like, uh, okay. He was like, I can drive you there if you want. And I was like, he was like this short Mexican guy, and he seemed really harmless. And I was like, uh, okay. And he, you know, and I asked him about his life, and he had a wife and kids. And so he wasn't flirting, or he had a girlfriend or something. I don't know. Just trying to be nice to you. Just yeah. being nice. And so I ended up telling him, and he didn't 
ever come on to me or ever say anything inappropriate. And then he drove me back and dropped me off, and that was that. And um, and I got to eat. And so I told that to Travis, and he didn't say anything at first, but it got back to Sky, and Sky was like, "Why didn't you call me?" And then I think eventually that was used against me to establish a pattern that I do weird things like that. So um, that's something we had arguments about a lot. Was um, he's like, I just think that. So he was truly upset with you about that. He and felt a little jealous, but. It, I, it, I t <coughs> he told me once that he's a little bit. Je he was a little bit jealous when he found out that I went on those dates. He's like, but I know we're not dating. And he's like, yes, I guess I am a little bit jealous. But with these other incidences, he said it just concerns him okay. because he thinks that he thought that I would get myself into a situation where I'd get hurt because I have that sort of attitude. And I was really, since I joined Prepaid, I've been really trying to break out of my bubble mm -hmm. and do things that are a little uncomfortable as far as um, um, talking to people. And, you know, I made a resolution this year to overcome a few fears that I have um, that I'm really scared of. So I think that by getting into that a little, then I can, you know, overcome some of that. Um, but his, he, he did act jealous, but he wouldn't say he was jealous. He yeah. would just say but he was But he would concerned. tell other people about it. What do you mean? Did he tell Sky Hughes? Oh, yeah, I guess it got, about I it. may have told Sky about that. But they probably had a conversation with him, and he probably voiced his opinion. They had many he conversations. Like um, I know that him and Sky had a lot of fights and arguments, and it was, uh, and I was the root of that a lot of time. But I think, you know, all in all, they, especially more recently, they got along a lot better. And I think she gave him a really hard time about our relationship. <coughs> One of the reasons he really wanted to keep it under wraps. So, you know, moving over to his trip to Cancun that he was going to. Um, when did you first find out about that? That he was going with Mimi? Oh, I didn't find. I found out about that at his memorial services on Monday. It was the Monday night memorial service. Okay. So you didn't, you didn't know that he was going to Cancun? I knew he was going. Yeah. Okay. You didn't I, know he was taking Mimi? I didn't know that. Oh. I think that's awesome, actually. Yeah. Um, well, unfortunately, Mimi had called him a week or two before, and uh, I told him, look, if you want to take somebody else, it's fine, but I have something to tell you. I don't look at you that way. Mm -hmm. I don't look at you as a boyfriend. If you want to be friends, we can be friends. And that really broke his heart. I know. Um, I mean, he didn't tell me that, but I found out from his bishop afterward when I talked to his bishop. And he, his bishop did say that Travis really took that one hard, and he said he took it to heart. And he said he realizes that it's problem speaking from a bishop's perspective. He said it's because, you know, Mimi is, is of a certain caliber when it comes to her spirituality, and Travis was just in another place. He's struggling. And that's something and, he struggled with for a long time. Well, I feel I feel responsible for that part of the Why do you feel responsible? Because I wasn't I mean I had moved away but I, I had participated with him in so many things that kept us both down spiritually for a long time. I mean if I had just cut ties completely, I could probably be married right now. I could probably be working on my own family. Um, what kept you that? Too. What what kept you to him? I don't understand. Well, Moving is expensive, for one. So once I was there, I was kind of stuck there. Um, but why was, do you continue to go back to him? You know what he wants. You know that it's not healthy. But yet you continue to go back. And it brings us to this point where we are now. Um, okay, I mean... It, I guess I... I physically... You, you keep I saying you, you knew that it, that it wasn't healthy and... and you knew it was contributing to something that wasn't good, and, I, I think at and the but time, yet you guys continued to do it. Yeah, and, and part of that, part of my um, perspective now has to do with the fact that I'm going through a repentance <coughs> process that I've worked out with, you know, the, with my bishop, and he's given me, you know, certain scriptures to read and, and ponder and pray about, and it just it brings me back to where I was prior to all that. Um, I don't know how much I ever really was there as much as I am now because even before I was baptized, even the two days before I was baptized, four days, it was on Wednesday and I was baptized on Sunday, um, before Thanksgiving, and it was just like, like Travis and I were making out and, you know, that was prior to, we hadn't 
gone all the way at that point, but was just too far. Mm -hmm. And I called in that evening, and I said how I, I didn't. It just it felt different. The first few times was like, hey, that was great, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. And then it just felt different this time. And it was right before I was about to be baptized, and you know, I already had my interview, and and so it was like. It was just different. And he said, well, yeah. He's like, I feel the same way, and I think that's the Spirit, you know, telling us this, that, or the other. And so um, I think that by driving the Spirit away so much, you just get into this pattern of, of I don't know. It was just, it was convenient. There was a couple times where I didn't answer his text messages, and he would send me little sad faces, or eventually he would wait, and then he would call. And he would call again, and if I didn't answer, he'd call three times. And obviously you guys kept this relationship hidden from everybody else, and, uh... Because nobody really knew about it. Well... There were some people who, who I talked to and said, yeah, they continued to have a relationship even after they broke up. And there are others who, say, who were saying that you had become obsessive with him to the point to where you would, uh, go into his house when he wasn't there, or when you weren't invited, and and he would talk to people saying, you know, she, she just kind of showed up, and I don't want to tell her to leave, but, uh, you know, I, I don't want her here. Oh, there were, a, that was, you must know, have been early on, because yeah. there were a couple times when we established a rule early on, mm -hmm. just don't, you know, don't come over unless, he said, you can come over anytime, but I need to know first. Yes. He's like, you just never know. Because you ran into somebody one time, right? Didn't you run into, like, one of his ex-girlfriends as well, or, or was it Deanna that you ran into? Oh, yeah. Um, well, that was, I was, that was okay that I was there. He asked me to stay there and um, be with Napoleon, because okay. that was during con uh, conference, general conference okay. in October of last year. Um, he took a road trip with some friends from his church to Utah, mm -hmm. and, um, Unless he's going to California, he pretty much leaves Napoleon at home. Mm -hmm. And so he needed someone to be there. And it's like I got full house privileges. I could sleep in yeah. the bed, I could eat, you know, food. And I've and talked to her and she said that was kind of an unusual kind of situation. She didn't expect you to be there. She didn't at all. And so at first I was like, well, I was like, did you give Deanna any, any, you know, flack over coming over unannounced? Because we had just set this rule. Mm -hmm. And he's like, I talked to her about it. He's like, but I'll tell you what, I was on the phone for three hours with her. She was freaking out that you were there. Mm -hmm. And um, I think the more that we, the more people knew about us associating, the more stress we both got from it. Mm -hmm. And so um, it was just easier to try and keep it a secret. And it, we, we didn't always do a good job at that. I think his roommates may have seen, seen her and some things. Mm -hmm. um, but they were kind of cute to themselves types, so we didn't worry too much about them. Okay. There was actually one roommate, John Hepworth, who ended up marrying, remarrying his, his same wife and moved back to Utah. And um, he, I was cleaning his house one day, and John told me, he's like, you know, Travis is dating. And I said, okay. And I assumed he was you know, going on dates and things. He's like, no, he's really trying to date. And, um, and I said, okay. And he's like, he, he's desperate to get married. And I said, I know that's true. And he's like, I just wanted to tell you that because I, I don't think he's being honest with you. And I was like, okay. So that night, um, you know, I confronted him about it and we had a really big fight. And it was also, you know, just, just a bunch of things were thrown in the mix together. And, and then we, and, and I, he said, listen, I'm not dating anyone. Um, but he was very angry at John for getting into his business. Um, he told John in a very nice way, I think, hey, I, I know that you have probably have good intentions, but just, you know, mind your own business kind of thing. And from then on, John, I don't think John really said anything. And that was... That was in October, I think. You, you, you've kind of given me a really good uh, rundown of your relationship and um, how you guys thought of each other and stuff. And and I was pretty pretty close to right on with my with my theory on how you guys, you know, why you continued to see each other and what was going on during that time. Um, I think there's some other things that you're not telling me. I think I think maybe you were the jealousy probably continue even after the fact that you moved away. Um, for instance, the, uh, 
was it the week of the well, the first week of, of June? You took a trip to Salt Lake City. Remember that trip we talked about? Oh, this year. I yes. was, I'm thinking back. Um, well, <clears throat> yeah. you, had, you had left. I think it was like a Monday. No, like Monday, June second. Monday, I June second, in morning or afternoon or something. I can't remember. Like late morning. I think it was morning. Okay, and you've gone down to Reading and rented a car. Mm -hmm. um, where did you rent that car? Uh, the Reading Airport. Okay. Do you remember what? car company it was? It, ooh, I don't remember the rental company, but I remember the make and model. It was a Ford Focus. Yeah, I got that from other people in Utah. They said you showed up in a Ford Focus. Uh -huh, it was white, four-door. No um, cruise control. I like road trips. Cruise control is really good. You don't remember what company it was? Uh, Who rented maybe it? I did. Was it with your credit card? Yeah. Or? Okay. Yeah. I could look it up. And so Maybe. you took a trip and you decided to go to, um, instead of going over to Utah, you went straight out to Los Angeles area. I went to Santa Cruz first. Santa Cruz. Mm -hmm. okay. And then I stayed the night in Monterey. And the next day I drove to <clears throat> Pasadena, okay. waiting for Laura to call me back. You didn't contact her at all? Uh, she contacted me finally after I'd already left LA. It was too late. You'd already yeah. left at that point. And we had plans to, to do that again this and week. And which route did you take from, from there? I was supposed to get on the 15 and go all the way up. Uh -huh. And I somehow got off the 15. Where did you end up? Um, for a while I was lost and I'm not above sleeping in the car so I slept for a while. Okay. I'm a heavy sleeper and I sleep a lot so. But you were on the 15 for a while mm -hmm. and you ended up getting off the 15 somewhere. Yeah I, I, I looked at a map and I'm pretty sure I know where I went. I went, can I draw you a map? Sure. Because I eventually started seeing signs um, for Phoenix and I was like, and it was several hundred miles away still. I was like, that's weird. Where am I going? Um, so you have California. Los Angeles and um, Nevada, Arizona, Utah. And I was supposed to go somewhere right up here. Oh, I'm a lefty. So the 15 kind of does one of these. Yeah. Goes um, through, let's say, Las Vegas right here. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, my no, that's okay. So that's okay. So we'll just put, just put I just, I know it cuts through Arizona in the corner. Um, Las Vegas. Um, St. George is somewhere here, and then the 40 runs somewhere this way, because somehow I, I ended up on the 40, and when I saw the 40, I'm like, the only thing I associate with the 40 is Flagstaff, and Flagstaff is somewhere yeah, in North Utah, right I mean North, North, Northern Arizona, and so, um, and it was, I was going east, and I was like, this isn't, this, what's going on here? I just, I wasn't going the right way. And so I, um, I've had for the last two years, I've had a car that has a GPS system in it. It's really good. And, um, it, I think it's, sir, it hasn't served me as far as getting a sense of direction. When I moved to Palm Desert, yeah, you kind of rely on it a little too much. Too much. In fact, when I moved, when I moved in with the, the last place I lived in Arizona, I did not know how close it was to Travis. I didn't realize. Um, I have a very bad sense of direction, and it wasn't until I began to, I used my GPS the whole time I was there pretty much just to find things. Um, anyway, so I got back, I looked at the map quest that I, I had mapped quest a bunch of places. I was maybe gonna go to Death Valley. Um, I was maybe going to Did go you actually there. cross over into Arizona? Is that how far you went? I crossed over twice, I think. But my map was wrong because the 93 goes north. And then I hit the 15 again. And then I got here. And then I hit Arizona. And then went here. It, the, somehow I got north on the 93. Okay. And then I hit the 15. So, I mean, I don't know where Phoenix is. And Mesa, it's got to be over here. Yeah. I didn't go anywhere near there. So you, you took this trip and you left on, was it Monday the 2nd, right? And you didn't get to Utah until Thursday, you told me. Yeah, I got to Utah on Thursday. So Thursday, and that's the 5th? Mm, 
Yeah, I think so. so Monday, that's Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, yeah, I feel. Okay, so we have, it's like 48 hours there that, well, obviously three days, but there's plenty, there's 48 hours. So this trip took you a little over 48 hours. So. Mm -hmm. um, I have a problem with this trip. Well, I okay. went first too. Yeah, I know. Okay. I know you went down here. Okay. I mean, obviously, Wairiga, right there. Beautiful little place here, except it's kind of smoky. And yeah, I can't right see now. the views. <laughs> I was hoping to see some mountains, but. You really I should see, see Mount Shasta if you get a chance. Okay. I've gone over this trip over and over in my mind and on paper. And even if there's still 20 some odd hours, even if you pulled over to sleep a couple of times. Oh, did I tell you that I got stranded? Yeah. Okay. You mentioned that. If you slept for 10 hours. I only slept for about Here an hour. and here, it would still leave 18 some odd hours for something else. Okay. This is what people are focusing on, is this trip that you took. Because they're saying she left. She didn't get to till Thursday. Wednesday? That's when Travis was killed. I did not go near his house. Okay. Isn't there... Aren't there... I pulled your cell records. Your cell phone was turned off. Between here and here. Okay. But... The last place it pulled it was here. The next place it turned on was here. What does that show me? Oh, well, I began. Oh, no, no, no. Is there plenty of time for you to do that? Yes. And I do I believe that you had come to visit Travis? Yes. I truly believe it. Did you have the opportunity? Yes, you were traveling alone. There's no other witnesses. Your phone just happened to turn off from here to here. Well, I didn't turn it off physically, but it died. And then it magically, you, oh you found back. your charger here? It was it was under the, packed under the seat of the passenger side. And it was when I was- When you were lost, you couldn't have maybe pulled over and found it or- Well, I did finally start looking when I was stranded. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have pulled over when I was lost. Okay, this, I've been focusing on this and going over and over my mind why this happened. Why your phone turns off here, outside of Los Angeles. What city is that? Because I got towards, as far as... Um... There's no cities, there's towers. Oh, okay. Well, okay, I got... There's towers dotted all over this place. Yeah. One tower hit here, the other tower here on the 93. There is no way somebody can get on that 15 and magically get on that 93. Because that 15 goes right through Las Vegas, right there, and continues this way. It well, never goes through Arizona again. I, I got off before Las Vegas. Okay. I didn't get the, back on. The 15, you'd have to go to Las Vegas and then come down south, go through uh, Boulder City. I went um, through Boulder City going north. Did you cross over the... Uh, the I know. Uh -huh. You didn't think that was odd? You were crossing it over Arizona? Well, after I, fi I figured out it was lost by then, and I found okay. I found the 93 and then found my way back to the 15. And this tower here, it's not just over the border in Arizona. It's quite a distance inside of Arizona that it hit. Because there is a mountain range all along here. And if you're on this side of the mountain range, pretty good distance. That signal's not going to come, not going to hit Utah or, Utah, uh, or Nevada or California. It's only going to hit in Arizona. Well, I had somehow gotten off the 15 and got onto the 40. Okay. Is what happened? Well, the only way you can get on the 40 is if after you cross the bridge or the uh, the dam. I think the, I think I got on the 40 in California from the 15. Well, like, because I had actually gotten, I actually began to drive the 10 west. But you see what I'm saying, the confusion that we're having? And, and we'll come back to this. 
Well, I got on the 40 somewhere over here. In California? Yeah, and continued to drive this way. Realized I was not in the right place at all. And then I got onto the, no the 93 North. And then I hit the 15 again. And then I went through Las Vegas and then St. George and then on to Utah. Okay. That still doesn't make any sense to me. And I can pull the maps and show them to you, and you can go over and over and over again. But I don't think you're being completely honest with me about about that trip. I honestly got lost. It's it's bad timing. Were you at Travis's house on Wednesday? Absolutely not. I was n I was nowhere near Mesa. I was nowhere near no Phoenix. I wasn't even close to him. Um, what if I could show you proof you were there? Well, Would that change your mind? I wasn't there. You can be honest with me, Joey. I was not at Travis's house. Was not. You were at Travis's house. You guys had a sexual encounter, which there's pictures. I know you know there's pictures. Because I have them. I will show them to you. Okay? So, what I'm asking you is for you to be honest with me. I know you were there. Are you sure those pictures aren't from another time? Positive. Absolutely positive. The last time I had any kind of sexual contact with Travis was in April. Remember I told you about the camera? Mm -hmm. That camera was damaged. Someone put it in a washing machine, ran it through a wash cycle with some clothes of Travis's, but the card's intact. Remember I told you that card was destroyed? I didn't want to tell you the truth, because I wanted to make sure those photos were accurate, and we can pull deleted photos. I don't care if you delete them six months ago. We can pull every photo that was ever on there. Pull the little pixels together, get the timestamps on them. Not all of them, but most of them have timestamps on them, and we can verify those timestamps. Mm -hmm. And I have pictures of you in Travis's bedroom with Travis, pictures of him, and it's obvious you guys are having sex, taking photos of each other, and they're dated and timestamped on the day he died. Are you sure it's me? I mean, that because I Joey, was not there. It's you. And you know it's you. I know all the details of this case. The only thing I don't know is why. Why did you choose to go visit Travis that day? And why did you do what you did? I've never why, heard Joey? Travis. You did. You hurt him. That's why we're here. That's why I flew up here. Because I needed to talk to you about this. I can just arrest you and throw you in jail, but I want to know why. Why did you do this to him? I wouldn't hurt Travis. He's done so much for me. There's so much evidence in that house. So much, and it all points to you. I, I lived there. I was there for months and months and months. Mm -hmm. I know you took pictures of him in the shower just before he died. I don't think he would allow that. Mm -hmm. And the camera actually took a couple of photos by accident during the time he was being killed. Really? Yeah, Joey, really. You were there. Quit playing this game. 
it's time for you to just come out and, I and didn't tell know. me. I am I did not hurt Travis. I did not hurt Travis. I wouldn't do that to him. We have the pictures. We have your blood at the scene. You're here with blood at the scene. the blood and the hair. I don't know about my left palm print. How can you explain the blood and the hair? Well, because I used to bathe Napoleon all the time. And, um... You haven't been there since April. Right? Mm -hmm. well, He's had the house cleaned several times since then. And this hair was not just a, a hair, you know, from the shower or something. This hair was stuck with blood. and obviously had blood on it. At the time, I got stuck where it, where it ended up. My There's hair would no have been way. all over. There's no other hair. Can you that take was. Can you take a hair sample? And we like, have your DNA. No, 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 but I mean, like, you know how they can do drug tests and find out when things yeah. were done? No, can you? we can't do that. Can't you measure the time? We maybe? have DNA matching that hair to you. Okay, I know, but my And that hair had a follicle on it, and that means yeah. that that hair wasn't there very long. Yeah. The follicle will usually dissipate and go away after a certain time. It'll fall off the hair itself. Well, when I would okay. brush my Joey, hair there, I mean... This one, you absolutely cannot, can, you cannot explain that away. You either had blood on your hand and you touched the wall, or there was blood on the wall. And you touched the blood. Could my palm print have already been there no. and then I touched it? Jody. Jody. This is over. This is absolutely over. You need to tell me the truth. Listen, the truth is I did not hurt Travis. Okay, so we're Jody, safe. Jody, you can continue to do this, okay? A records check shows you that you uh, has reported a a gun stolen, 25 auto, just happens to be the same caliber as the weapon used to kill him. A 25 auto was used to kill Travis? Mm -hmm. Yeah, along with multiple stab wounds. Joey, if you want, I can show you some pictures of him. Do you want to see pictures of him? Part of me does, and part of me doesn't. Why, because you don't want to remember? No, I Jody. just, there's a morbid curiosity. Jody. I wanted to know how he died. We can keep playing these games over and over again. I'm not gonna believe you. All when right. you start telling me the Listen. truth, then I can believe you. But I can't deny this evidence. I can't. The trip you took doesn't make sense. The opportunity was there. Your pictures on that date with him. Your blood is in the house. Mixed with his. Mixed. Not alongside, but mixed. Your hair is there with blood. And your palm print is there in blood. Was I, it? It's over. Could it have been my blood from before? Your image is not important right now. Saving the rest of your life is... Well, listen, if I'm found guilty, I don't have a life. I'm not guilty. I didn't hurt Travis. 
If I hurt Travis, if I killed Travis, I would beg for the death penalty. Was there anybody else with you? I was traveling alone the whole time. Was there anybody else with you at Travis's house on Wednesday the 4th? I was not at Travis's house on Wednesday the 4th. You were? Because that's when the blood was left on, uh, the bloody palm print was left on his wall. I don't know what to tell you. If you were in my shoes and I had this evidence against, against you, what would you say? If I had that evidence against you, it would yeah. be pretty obvious. But I guess being in my position, I, it just seems so impossible. I want to see it. I want to know. I mean, I'm not like, I'm not a murderer, but I guess if I were to do that, I would wear gloves or, you know, something. I just, how could my, I don't know. I know you tried to wash him off, try to get some of the blood off, try to clean him up a little bit. But you're even denying the pictures of you being there. There's pictures of you laying on the bed in pigtails. Pigtails? Yes. Now I've got pictures of you that I've blown up, and you've got the little mole right there. It's the same one. It's you. It's obvious. I can show you some of these pictures. Do you want to see the pictures? Will that change your mind? I mean, I am curious. Okay, let me take a break and let me go find them. And I'll bring them and show you. I wasn't there. But you need to think about what you're saying. This continuing to lie is not going to help you. It you know to I... something I didn't do won't help me either. Okay, let's say for a second that I did. And I say, I did it. Mm -hmm. I mean. The motive is there, the jealousy issue. But I wasn't, I wouldn't even say it was jealous. I mean, there, I mean, there may have been some jealousy there, but. Then what is I think it, if what anyone, caused this? I think if, you know, if anyone, maybe Travis was jealous, but. <clears throat> That's not what everybody else says. Well, they know he was jealous, but they think that you are absolutely obsessed. Obsessed is the word that they use. That's the word I hear from everybody. Fatal attraction. I don't know how many times I've heard that. Look at Jody. Jody had to have done this, or she got someone to do it for him. There's not one person that says anything else. Why is that? That's the perception they have of you. And there's a reason for that perception. Maybe because it's true. And maybe because we kept hanging out. Mm -hmm. But not because it's true. Cause this. I can prove you were there. I can prove it. But what I don't have is I don't have answers on why it happened. Or, you know, maybe something just got out of hand. Just, maybe maybe things got out of hand. Did you and, find the, the, the gun? Maybe that would... Joey, we're just playing games here. That gun was in your possession. When did you report it stolen? Um, I didn't even know that there were guns until my, grandpa my grandparents reported it stolen the day that their house was broken into. And when was that? I don't remember. It was a few months ago, maybe. What did you do with the gun? I don't have a gun. They're going through your house right now, so... Are they going to find anything there that will lead you back to this? I don't think they would. I mean, there's nothing that could link me there. I mean, that's pretty compelling, I have to admit. If you found my palm print there, I don't know. I just, that's... Do you have a pair of sweatpants that's got stripes around the backside with zippers? Um... Somebody's seen you wearing those before. I've got so many clothes. Yeah, I think I do. Wait. I have a, well, I have zippered, one that zips in the back. It's got like stripes, uh, like big stripe on it on the side. Well, it's got the black the stripe all the way down, and they're white. It's got the black. I have those. They're at the house. Okay. It's got um, I have two pairs actually. 
one is too small and one is just about right. Um, the other one I bought anyway, even though it was too small because it was on sale and it's a good deal. Um, but yeah, they have stripes. And they have well, what does that mean? What is that? Because I believe you were wearing a pair like that when, that's, when this happened. Remember I told you about the camera? It was taking pictures by mm -hmm. accident. Mm -hmm. The camera was upside down. Yeah. Flash. Another time, the camera flashed. It looked like it was on the ground. Maybe it was kicked. But it took pictures. And it's obviously a female. Mm -hmm. And one of them was wearing those pants. Oh, I didn't even bring those pants in that shirt. So... And if we find those pants, is that going to make my case a little bit better? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to take a little break, but I need you to think about what you're doing here. Because the best thing for you to do is to tell me the truth. You tell me exactly what happened. Because, you know what, I think your mom and your dad really deserve the truth. They're going to be asking. And it's absolutely, it, it's so important that you tell me why this occurred, what was going through your mind, and what caused you to do this. It happened, and I can prove it happened, and there's no doubt in my mind, and there absolutely is no doubt in anybody else's mind who's investigating this, that you were there and that you did this. But I'll let you think about that, okay? And I'm going to go look for some pictures, and I'll bring them over, and we'll continue this discussion, okay? Let me go find them. I'll be right back. I'm not a murderer.
Careful showing, not showing you certain photos Please because some of them are very bad. That's obviously Travis's house, right? Remember that? Um, yeah. If Travis were here today, he would tell you that I did if it wasn't me. My job is to speak for Travis right now, and everything Travis is telling me is that Jody did this to me. Have you ever shot that 25 auto? Mm -hmm. Have you ever touched it? The one that was stolen? I've never seen it. My good grandpa said it looks like a toy one. Mm -hmm. I don't know what a 25 looks like. I know what a 22 looks like. It looks like a 22, actually. Well, the 22s that I saw kind of looked like the ones in the westerns where they had the barrel and the long. You know. But there was another 22 in this in the store that looked like a toy gun, so it looked like a squirt gun, like a water gun. Never go for that. Soon after you and him had sex on his bed. That couldn't have been too soon after. Mm -hmm. An hour or so. The last time Two we had hours. sex on his bed was an eight. Let's just say I've seen all of you, and I've seen all of Travis, but the one that sticks in my mind of Travis is on the autopsy table, and I'm not going to show you that, or should I? But this one I don't know if I should show you, but... Nothing bad. 
too bad. But it's just one of the photos that was taken by accident. And this is just a small portion of it. That's your foot, Jody. Those are your pants. No, it's off color because we had to enhance it and the color kind of changes a little bit. Let's try this. This is his bathroom. That is not my foot. These are your pants. It's a different color, like I said, because we had to enhance it and the color changes. The zipper back. I have both of those pants at home. If these are the same one, I don't have a zipper there, though. Not on mine. And this is a black stripe, and this is white, and the black goes around the bottom, too. So. Couldn't even recognize Travis. He'd been there so long. I keep thinking of Brother High. I'm going to dress him. No, this is another one that's just a copy, but it's you. stamped all everything. First picture here, Travis. Let's see. The date. 6 4 0 8 10 5 22 p.m. That's when it started. Photo view started, you know, in Travis's bedroom. About 1 1 30, 1 45, something like yeah. that. Um, I don't know what kind of color I got. There, see that? Mm -hmm. That spot? See the spots here? They look a different color because we used a chemical to enhance this. Mm -hmm. That right there, blood. It's a mixture of yours and his. And that's your palm print. Of your left palm. I don't have any cuts on my left palm. Mm -hmm. Nobody said that. Your cut was on palm. Do you have any recent cuts that are healing? Well, my cat scratches me. Little things. These are all her work. You can see. Mm -hmm. This is her. That's her. I've got scars. Okay. She's very, she's a feral cat. All these little things are her. Well, enough about your cat, but... Why is your palm print in blood? <sighs> How can that be my palm print? Because you were there. What is this? That's before we used the chemical. We thought we'd get something from there, but this is where your palm print was. Right on the wall. There's no doubt in my mind that you were there. There's no doubt in my mind that you did this. None. So you can go and take your blue in the face and tell me you weren't there and you had nothing to do with it. I won't believe you. I will not believe you. Because Travis is telling me that you did this to him. That's my job. My job is to speak for him. And this is what he's telling me. And I want to know why. That's, it's killing me inside. That's I don't know why. Thing, like, there's no reason for it. There's no reason why. There's no reason I would ever want to hurt him. There's no way anybody else. He could, never raped me. Nobody. He never. There's no way anyone else could have left your palm print in blood on that wall. No way. Get that through your head. If I was going to ever try to kill somebody, I would use gloves. I've got plenty of them. Now, you said you were, you know, you had planned this out perfectly. Maybe you were going there to just talk to him, have a good time with him, 
something got out of hand. Even if I were there, and even if I were going there to just have a good time with him. What if I tell you somebody saw you there? A neighbor. Do you remember some of the neighbors? Just know you? The next door neighbor? Mm -hmm. His wife? Mm -hmm. I don't know his wife. But okay. What about some of the neighbors across the street? No, I've never met them. No. But you've, you've hung around there quite a bit, and they know you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they've seen you there on that day. I wasn't there that day. Jody, you were there that day. And even if I... I'm trying to think, the, the, the majority of the time that I spent there, I had platinum blonde hair. So I mean, and I've never once said hi to them, met them, shook their hand, met them face to face, crossed the street. When I spent time there, he wanted to keep it private, so it was, um, I spent the majority of my time inside. Not, you know, walking around outside. Except for a few times when I took his dog. Would they see your car there? Or would you park it down the street? No, they would see it there. I drove an Infinity. So they would definitely recognize the car, I'm sure. Because, well, there are a lot of cars there a lot of the time. Where's the Infinity now? Just, I gave it back to the bank. To the impound yard somewhere? Mm hmm. Are we going to find any evidence in that car? You're free to look. I don't want to look. You can also look in the rental car. What company did you rent it from? I don't remember, but I can check my um, I can check my my debit card record. Okay. I remember them making models. No, we're waiting for it anyway. But you know, all the new cars have GPSs in them. Oh. Factory. Not for you to well, use. Well, then that's good. But for us to use if we need to. Well, then that's good, because I was also going to ask you, I don't know if this is something that you can recall, but a lot of the stoplights in Mesa and things have cameras on them. <coughs> is there, there any way we could back that up? Or, you know, if I were going to Phoenix, well, going through that tunnel, is that surveillance? No. Is there surveillance anywhere? Unless you ran a red line. Unless you got cut on a speed camera. But nothing beats that stuff. And I have a solid case against you. And I can present it to the judge. As cold as, as, as it is now. I don't know why she did it. Or I can present it to the judge. With your explanation. With your parents' explanation. You have you talked to your parents about what happened? I told them I was worried about stuff. About what stuff? I said that, well, they knew I was upset about Travis, and I feel really bad by the way I was acting, because I wasn't, especially toward my grandparents. There were why, a lot of times Why are they not surprised that you're sitting here talking to me about this? What, what do you mean? They're not surprised. They're Obviously. concerned. They're, have they're hurt. To them? I haven't, but my other detectives have. And they're very concerned with you. But they kind of suspected that you had something to do with Travis's death as well. Whose no, parents think not, that? Th that's because I told them that a lot of people were dropping my name. And I said, I'm not worried about it because I didn't do it. I said, but it's very much, it's hurting my reputation right now. And it's, made, it's casting me in a bad light. I wouldn't be worrying about your reputation right now. I'd be worrying about the rest of your life. That means nothing. Absolutely nothing. Well, the, my reputation will affect the rest of my life. So I am worried about my reputation. You're going to continue with the story then that you weren't in Mesa on the 4th. You weren't in Travis's house. You didn't have sex with him that day. And you had nothing to do with his murder. Those pictures are, I don't know, to me, pictures are very compelling. Um, I know that they can be modified. I know they can be altered. And date and time stamps, I 
don't know, but I, I think they can be I didn't want to find anything. I don't think you would. We take absolutely special care of what we do. I know. We actually take an image of that card, or let's say you get a computer, we take an image of that hard drive and make a copy of it. We don't even touch your hard drive. We just work with the copy. And that's exactly what we do with the photos. We don't work with the originals. We just make an exact digital copy of everything, move it over so we don't touch it. And then we analyze it. And our guys are so good Every case that you've ever done that I know of has never been lost in court. It's been argued and argued and argued. There's no way that they duplicate uh, or that they enhance or that they change or that they do anything to a photo. If I'm found guilty, what happens? You don't have to pay the price. So well, what's the price? I don't know. Don't you know what the sentences are, that, the sentences that are carried for something? It depends like on your situation, how old you are, it depends on the type of crime, it depends on whether you show remorse or not. And part of that remorse is at least coming clean. When somebody doesn't come clean, I don't see any remorse. I don't know if a judge would see any remorse. I don't know if a jury would see any remorse. But I don't know. That's not for me to decide. My job is to investigate, find out who did it, why they did it, and present it to a court. And that's it. I just can't imagine. You have something to tell me, but you're, you're just so resistant. I know you're afraid, but you're already going through it right now. There's no backing up. There's no backing up to yesterday. There's no backing up to that day. It already happened. And unfortunately, you're going to have to face the consequences. Um, you know, if, if I did that, I would... I'd be fully ready to face the consequences. Um, I'm not really for things like, you know, I'm all for the Ten Commandments, thou shalt not kill. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, but... There's, there's no evidence to show anybody else did that. None. Well, I, I'm just... You think we'd find somebody else's fingerprint if they did that? Possibly. There's something that happens. You keep saying gloves. There's things that happen when people wear gloves. Then we can actually see that, oh, somebody wore gloves in this case. Nobody wore gloves in this case. Nobody. Well, no I'm, I'm just it. saying that if I were to carry out something like that, I would have worn gloves. I nobody else, nobody else did this. There's no evidence to show that anybody else did this but you. You were the only one. That is it. And. I'm not seeing any remorse, I'm not seeing any anything from you to make me believe anything otherwise. You can continue to say, I didn't do it, well, but you're the kid that got caught on videotape stealing the candy, and you continue to say, it wasn't me. I have the proof. I have the pictures. It wasn't me. I don't think you would you would admit to it if somebody, if your own mother saw you do this, and she told me, yeah, I saw her do this, you would say, no, it wasn't me. Why won't you admit to it? I just can't. I didn't kill Travis. I just didn't. I did not take his life. Did you have anything to do with the death of Travis? Not, I don't think I had anything directly to do with it, but I feel responsible somewhat for it. Then what can you tell me about his death? You know a lot more about it than I do. When I say I feel responsible, it's because I was, I wasn't planning to go there at all and he really wanted me to go. And 
I told him no, and I would have if it weren't for Ryan. And there's nothing really with Ryan and I. In fact, he has been very hesitant to move anything forward because he's not sure about me. Um, he said a lot of people are talking. I'll just tell you that right now. I really wish this would get solved so that we can just put it behind us. Um, maybe that's a good thing because he's not an active church member anyway. But the reason I feel is because if I had, if it weren't for Ryan, I would have folded and I would have just scrapped all my plans and spent all of my days there. Um, but I didn't, and I stood strong, and he got mad and got sad and he guilted me. He didn't get really mad, he just kind of guilted me. And finally I was like, whatever, fine, we hung up. I feel that if I would have gone there, that I could have, that I could have done something. I could have. But you were there, Jody. You were there on Wednesday before. Can I ask you, I don't know if you know this. Oh, I have a camera in my storage unit that I don't use anymore, but the Travis and I used to use frequently. Mm -hmm. And we took pictures with it. Um, this is, I don't know. This is kind of- Do you remember taking these pictures? There were many pictures. I, vaguely, there were, we took tons and tons of pictures. Some I saved, most we deleted. Um, some he sent me through his phone. And he usually I, deleted all pictures like this. Yeah, well, before he any, got there, Any pictures like this that I found anywhere on his computer, camera, anything, they were deleted. Well, prior to him getting his camera, all those pictures were on my camera. Mm -hmm. um, so... All I these have, same pictures? Um, I don't know. I don't know. We took um, we took a bunch the week before I left. Um, we took a bunch over the last se six or seven months. Um, we took over the last year, even when we were still dating. But we would delete them mostly. Um, there were some that he sent me that I didn't delete. What I'm asking is, is it possible that, you know, that my memory card would have been in his camera? They're interchangeable. How do you know they're interchangeable? I don't know. That's so what I'm asking is what kind of memory card it was. Just a regular little SD card? Well, because I've got one, I've got one that's like this big and it's thin. It's like a cracker. Mm -hmm. And the one I use on my professional camera is like this size and it's more kind of like that thick. And the little one is really thin. And it's got like little thingies here for reading it. And the big one looks like that in the middle part. So that one obviously probably wouldn't be interchangeable because no. it's a cannon and it's a nice it's thing. It's not interchangeable, it is. But the, the other one, I don't know. I don't know. Your camera's here, his camera's there. He just bought that camera. Well, the other camera that I used before that's broken now, it's in my storage mm -hmm. unit, but it's still there. And you're saying those pictures are on that camera? Um, no, what I'm saying is I had several memory cards for this camera that I don't have anymore. And so I guess I, it's so far-fetched. But I guess it's possible that my, my card... So you're saying somebody took your, your pictures or your card and is framing you and put... No, 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 I'm just saying that if, if my memory cards were left at his house, he could he would have used those for his camera. I don't know. I don't know. I can explain the blood, though, and I can explain the hair. I don't know about the camera. I can't explain the blood or the hair. Well, the hair, there's hair everywhere, and probably every square inch of that house, my hair. Yeah. If you sweep it, you'll get hair everywhere all over around the toilet, around in the shower. I don't know about the shower, because the shower gets used, but definitely around the bottom of the um, the sink area. And maybe I'm Still doesn't trash. explain the hair to me. It had a follicle in it. You haven't been there since April. There's no way. No way. The blood? No. 
Father? The blood is mixed with his, and that's the blood that he that he bled that day when he was killed. Well, print. I don't know yeah, if you can not. check how fresh the blood was. No, we can't check how fresh it is, but we can go by where it is. Oh, okay. Because I cut myself. When and I was. And you. And you're saying that that blood that you cut yourself with back, who knows when, well, was still on the wall oh, in the exact same spot. Oh, I don't know. Not where the, the where the bloody palm print was. It was a glass that Travis had that I was using to wash Napoleon with. I used to give him baths. And I dropped it, and when I picked up all the glass, and I'm pretty casual about it because I break glass at work all the time, and it's not a big deal. It's nothing to be scared of. And, I was probably just being careless with it, and I sliced myself open, and... Is that how you want to leave this? Just these far-fetched excuses on why your blood is there, why your hair is there, why your palm print is there, what pictures are there? I don't know about the pictures. That's how you want to leave this? I wouldn't want to. I seriously would not want to. You need to come out and tell me why this happened. I will not accept any other excuses. I will just move on with my investigation, with my final report, submitting all the conclusions and all the evidence. And we can just let that judge and the jury decide. You yourself said that if you were in my shoes, you would think that I was guilty. We can leave it in the hands of a jury. Test? We can do that. That's fine. Would that help me at all? I mean, you can't use them in court, but... Well, then there's no point in taking it. I thought those things can be used. In certain cases. In this case, If you want, I can check. Absolutely. If I passed a lie detector test, would that help me at all? Could help you. You're so weird anyway. This, this is, is your one opportunity to talk to me because I. It's going to be a while before I talk to you again, and it's not going to be in this kind of setting. Okay, do you understand what's going to happen to you? Well, we're going to, since these charges are out of Arizona, um, we're going to send you through the court system here. And then we're going to ask to extradite you to Arizona from California. That just means permission to, for you to bring you over because you're out of state limits. And the next time we talk could be in a whole different setting. Could be in a jail somewhere. I think this setting is a little bit better. But it's up to you. Jody, I know you were there. I know that Travis was either in the shower or just outside the shower when he was shot. And I know somebody who was extremely angry at him. It took a knife to him and couldn't stop. He couldn't stop. And before you knew it, it was all over. And then you panicked. And then you... I would, I've never been angry, that angry at him. Not enough for that. I've been so far angrier at other people, at other ex-boyfriends. Then tell me who could have done this. <clears throat> who did this? I don't know, but if I am... If I go to trial for this, and if I'm convicted for this, whoever did this is going to be sitting very pretty somewhere. Glad that it wasn't them. And it's my job to make sure that an innocent person does not go to jail. But I don't see an innocent person sitting in front of me. When I asked you, I always, I always ask this one question. Actually, it's two. First one is, did you kill Travis? And you kind of hesitated a little bit and said, I, I didn't have anything to do with that. Then I asked you a similar question. Did you have anything to do with Travis's death? 
You hesitated again. Well, that's because I feel like if I had gone to Arizona like you Most asked, people would say, no. Did you kill Travis? No. Well, I didn't, and I didn't have anything to do with it. Now, do I feel responsible? I've been carrying around guilt since I heard about it. Why do you feel responsible? If you felt responsible, it means you know something else. No, because it means I your think... actions led to his death. Because he always has guilted me. He's always guilted me. And the last so you time feel you somebody talk... else. You feel somebody else killed him. Well, yeah. For what reason? I don't know. I don't know then that. How do you feel guilty? Because if you don't know the reason. Here's why I feel guilty. The, one of the last times we spoke, he was guilting me about not coming to see him. And part of my heart still wanted to go see him. And another part just wants to move on and pursue this new avenue, mm -hmm. which was in Utah. And there is a tinge of guilt. You know, when he would text me and he would say, hey, you want to come over and make out or want to da 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 um, I didn't respond one night. And I just stayed strong and I didn't respond and then he called and called and called and then the next day he was like you don't care about me you don't love me you don't care I was there all alone and you didn't want to come and hang out you didn't want to come and keep me company and he says it not like that but in that tone but it's in the sweetest sweetest way and it's 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 guilt um, I still don't get the guilt I really don't. You keep explaining it, but it has nothing to do with whether he, because he guilted was killed me. or not. He How is you being there going to prevent him from being killed? Well, I kind of feel that if I had gone, that we could have been out watching well, a movie, or we could have, two people could have done something more than just him. I just feel like if, if, if there was some way that I, I could have prevented it. There's some way that I could have done something to stop it. And I told that to a few people, and they're like, well, you might have been killed too. Maybe, but maybe Travis would still be alive. Travis has done a lot for me, and I wouldn't hurt him. He introduced the gospel to me. Well, I have proof that says otherwise, Jody. I, I can't. I can't deny that. I can't deny that proof. And that proof is not pointing at anybody else. Nobody. Nobody in this entire world except you. Nobody. Nobody else was in that house that day. Except you. You were the only one. You and him. Alone. I didn't even go to Mesa. Can you check? Can you check the GPS on the car? Yes, we will check that. If it's, you know, and if that comes back and... And I've that, looked at the map and the way that you're saying that you travel, there is no listen, way. When the last road trip Travis and I went on, we drove to Utah. One, I mean, I'm sorry, we drove to Oklahoma City um, from Mesa. And one of our stops on the way was Roswell. After Ro He drove all night and I slept. And then when, after Roswell Museum, it was my turn to drive. And he's like, just get on this and drive 98 point something miles, and then we should be there. So I got on the road, and I drove 98.6 or 2 or whatever miles it was. And I woke him up, and I said, I don't think we're here. And, I, and he woke up and looked around, and it was just like rolling fields forever. And I drove completely in the wrong direction. And I'm not saying, I don't know, I'm just saying I have a poor sense of direction. I got totally lost. I know maybe that's just bad luck. I got totally lost. No, even if you got totally lost, it doesn't explain all that time. It does not. I mean, if you went four hours here or five hours in the wrong direction, it's still. Well, would not at one point I wasn't going anywhere because I ran out of gas. I was totally stranded. I was sitting like a sitting duck, and that's when I began. It was it was a little bit warm, and you know, it wasn't too hot, but. Um, that's when I just, I read for a little bit, I already slept, um, and that's when I just started looking around the car and organizing stuff and getting trash together and had a couple bites to eat from snacks that I had and when I was cleaning out under the seat I found my phone charger, plugged it in, powered it on, there was no cell phone reception anywhere. So you've never seen his camera? His new camera? I don't know. He described it. Did you ever touch his camera? I've never seen it. 
Okay, so there's no reason your fingerprint should be on it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because that thing's off at a lab right now. And they're hopeful that they can get some prints off the camera. Okay. And if your prints come back on that camera, what are you going to say? Well, they won't come back on it because I never touched it. That you still can't explain the rest of this stuff. I honestly can't explain the pictures. The other stuff, and it, or the palm print, the other stuff I can explain. No, you can't explain the blood either. Because that blood is in blood. I mean, it's, it's part of the print. Unless you cut yourself at the beginning of the year and left your palm print in blood, and it stayed there until he was killed. I cut myself. It wasn't the beginning of the year. It was before convention. No, you can't explain it. I'd, I'd have to say early March. That palm print is there in blood, partially yours and partially his. Is, is it possible that there's just like any other way in the universe that that could have gotten there? Possible. Probable is the question you need to ask. Probable is absolutely not probable. I understand that, but it is possible. Anything is possible. That is very compelling. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm here. That's why I traveled here. Because I came here to arrest you. And get an explanation from you. That's the second reason. And since you're not giving me an explanation, I guess we'll just continue with the, with the uh, I just have no reason to hurt Travis. You do have a reason to hurt Travis. What would my reason possibly be? There's a whole history of you two. But and everybody knows it. I have a whole history with other guys Why that Why is everybody saying that you had something to do with his death? Why is everybody saying that you were capable of hurting him? Everybody says it. I don't know why anyone So don't tell me that you're not capable. I don't even hurt spiders. Have you ever had any anger issues before? Never in your past? I've, I've had arguments. I, we're trying to say well, everybody has arguments. I'm talking about anger. Just mm -hmm. absolute anger. You just, you lose it sometimes. No, I had a nervous breakdown once. Are you taking any medication or anything? Mm -hmm. Nothing. Well, I had a nervous breakdown when my uh, boyfriend and I were arguing once, and um, and he he began to argue with me in a way that was totally different from how we, we had ever argued before. And he was just like, every time I'd say something, he was like, no, 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 you know. Mm -hmm. It was kind of weird. Like every time I tried to formulate a thought, and I was just sad and I was crying every time I tried to put him in that he would interject and, and twist it and it was like the weirdest psychological thing that had ever happened and and the way I reacted was I, I went into my room it was the guy I bought a house with um, I went into my room and shut the door we had separate bedrooms and I was in, in his room I went down the hall into my room and shut the door and I just remember hyperventilating and that's all and I was crying and then um, I went to get something out of my car. And when he saw that, he um, maybe thought I was going to leave. So he asked me for the key to his truck and pulled behind my car because he thought that because I was so upset, I shouldn't drive anywhere. But I mean, that's other than arguments, no anger issues. That I can remember. Oh, I kicked a dog once. I was a freshman in high school, and I love, love, love animals. And one, we had this dog, his name was Doggy Boy, and my parents, until this dog that they have now, have never been able to, and I don't mean just them, we as a family have never been able to care for a dog properly as far as give it attention and take it for walks and be consistent. Um, so this dog stayed in the backyard a lot, and he stayed tied up on, you know, in the shade with plenty of, you know, leeway. At one point, though, he was untied, and I took the trash out, and he, and this is when my little brother and sister were still in diapers, and he tore this, it was a diaper trash, and he tore diapers all over the yard. 
And of course I had to clean it up and when diapers get wet and they're like this jelly, spongy, weird stuff. Mm -hmm. And I just, I got mad and I, I just kicked him with my right foot and he just moved a few feet and he didn't yelp or anything, but he just went, he ran away and I never saw him again after that. And I mean, that's probably an anger issue, I guess. But well, one time kicking a dog is not an anger issue. It changed my world as far as animal treatment goes. I just, I've never seen him since. And I need to apologize for that to him. I know it sounds weird, my relationship with animals, it's kind of like they're like people too, you know, they have souls. What you need to do is you need to apologize to Travis. But you just refuse. Listen. You know, I can't help you anymore if you're not gonna, if you're not gonna help yourself. You asked me I really prior. can't. I can't, Jody. You can keep talking until you blow in the face, and I can't continue to listen to lies. Do you have anything else that you need to tell me? Yeah, you would ask me what have I been up to in the weeks since I got back. Mm -hmm. What did you mean by that? Just what, what have you been up to? Because I know this thing has to be weighing pretty heavy on you been trying to put his death behind me. If I, if I did anything that had anything to do with his death in any way. It's not if to me. I wouldn't. It's not if. It's not if at all. Well, to me it is. I would, I would be more than remorseful. So maybe something you're blocking out of your head? I don't think so. I mean, I tend to write everything down. I tend to... I just finished the book, The Road Less Traveled, mm -hmm. and he said, um, the true definition of sanity is dedication to reality at all costs. Mm -hmm. So I think at times, you know, I may have, you know, prayed or meditated upon a certain way, you know, like, like me being, um, wealthy or something like that, but... Well, this is definitely reality. We are sitting here inside of an office, the sheriff's department, and you are facing first degree murder charges. What is and the difference? And you are going to be booked into jail, and eventually you will be brought back to Arizona, and you will stand trial. That's the reality. And once you realize that, I think you'll be better for it. And if you really wanted to embrace reality, you would sit here and explain to me why this happened. But you refuse. You I refuse to embrace reality. Why. I don't know why he was killed. I don't know why. I had issues with Travis. If anything, he had more issues with me. Um, I've had worse issues with other people. They're all still alive. I'm still friends with my ex-boyfriends. They're all still alive. You know, I've been doing this a long time. And there's one thing that I can never get out of my head, ever since the first day I talked to you, is there's an old saying that, you know, someone's just not acting right. Look into it. You have not acted right from day one. From day one when I talked to you on that phone, I just sensed that you just, you weren't acting like somebody who used to love this guy or who still loved him. I... Even as a close friend. And even now, when I told you that I have all this evidence against you and and that you're facing first-degree murder charges, you're, you're just not acting right, Jody. You're acting like somebody who's guilty. How so? You tell me. I know, because I've been doing it a long time. It's, it's taken me a long don't. time to, to figure it out. But within the first 30 seconds to a minute of a conversation, I can I know when somebody's acting right. There's a certain way people act. How did I act? Okay. It was it's not like, you think. It's not like TV. It's not anything like that. It's not what you see in the movies. I see reality. When I accuse somebody of committing a, a heinous crime or you know something very serious, reality hits in 
and they definitely act a certain way, and that's not you. You act just like everybody else who I accuse of doing a crime, who did it. And there's no other way to tell you. Is it because I'm not crying? No. It's not because of that. What is it? I mean, I'm not going to change how I act. No, so obviously you can't like, change the way you're, at, you're no, acting. No, I mean, I am who I am. Okay, but... you're, you're sincere in the way you're acting. But uh, well, how you're, is just, it? you're just not telling the truth. How is it different? Well, it's not really something you need to focus on anymore. I think you need to focus on the truth, but it's something that you refuse. So if you don't, if you don't want to continue, then, then we'll just move on to the next step. Listen, it's not that I didn't love Travis, and it's not that I don't still love him, but I really needed to move on. Mm -hmm. And the last... What prevented you from moving on? I... Nobody was preventing you from moving on. Well, the only person preventing me really from moving on was myself. Mm -hmm. And until I made that step and I moved back, I moved away, and we communicated gradually less and less and less, and I was fine with that. Um, I haven't found the guy, the man that I want to marry, the person I want to spend my life with. Um, but in my mind, Travis did, and I was happy for him, and I thought there was also a part of me that felt if I stay, I'm going to jeopardize that for him as well. We both deserve to be happy. We both deserve to have, you know, be married in the temple. Mm -hmm. um, and that's where he wanted to go. Um, so, I mean, I didn't know that Mimi didn't feel that way. I had never spoken to her except at church when I came down to Arizona. It was really brief. Um, and it was the bishop who told me that you know, she had essentially turned him down. And the last few, um, I mean, now that I think about it, he was really just blah, you know, in his, in his attitude and stuff. And I just thought maybe that's just because we're just beginning to more distance ourselves. Um, and, you know, he still had his trip planned to come up here. I just, the, the reason I, I don't know, it's not that I'm not remorseful that he died. I didn't kill him. I didn't take his life. Did you have anything to do with I have his nothing life to do with his death at all. At all. The reason I hesitate is because maybe this is something that's wrong with me psychologically, is I think of the butterfly effect. And it's like you could say that the guy pumping gas station, get, pumping gas down at the gas station could have potentially, because you see all these movies, these funky movies, where it's like this affected this, which affected this, which affected this, oh, if he had never done this. I know if you had never met him, he probably would still be alive. That's true. Yeah, but that's because you killed him. No. Jody, you did. I did not. Jody, you can't convince me otherwise, unless you come up with more proof that you didn't, but I can't prove that could anybody it? else say. No, I couldn't have. Well, what about if the car comes back that it was never even in that area? It still doesn't negate the fact that we have this other evidence. I mean, this is absolutely some of the best evidence I've ever had in a case. And I've convicted a few people on less than this. Well, so I'm as good as done, right? With that evidence. I just can't admit to something that I didn't do. If it would help, if it would help my case and give me an easier sentence, I know that people plead guilty for those things. No, and I don't want you to do that. That is the absolute last thing I want. Well, I know. What I want to do is I want to sit here with you, and I want to go over why you visited him that day, what you guys talked about. What caused you to get so angry? And the details on how it happened. And it's something that you probably don't want to remember. But it's something that I need. Because for me to finish a case completely, I need to know 
not just the details, but what was going through your mind. Because I need to present that as a full picture. Because if I don't, I don't feel that I've completed my job. Then my job is to speak for him, not anybody else. My job isn't to speak for you. My job isn't to speak for his family. It's to speak for Travis. And I know something horrible happened that day. Absolutely horrible. Something that could have been avoided. Whether something was planned, I don't know. Whether you planned it or whether it accidentally happened or something got out of hand, I, I don't know. All I can do is speculate. And I want to believe that you're not this cold-hearted person that could just go out and do something like this to somebody. I want to believe that, like a lot of people, things got out of control, and before you knew it, it was too late. That's what I want to believe, and that's truly from my heart, because I sit here and I've talked to you, and and I'm talking to you now and all those conversations we had on the phone and I don't see a cold-hearted murderer like you would see on TV or that I've seen before sit across from me. That's not what I see in you. And I'm, I'm gonna call it begging. I'm begging you to at least come clean and tell me why. Because I don't wanna leave here today not knowing because it's going to follow me forever. I wish that I had answers. I'm sorry. I'm... You need to just let the answers come out. There's just no reason. There's just no reason. There's no good reason why this happened. There's never a good reason why somebody dies like this. How many times was Travis stabbed? More than I want to remember. And I'm not going to sit here and show you pictures of him after the fact. I don't do that. That's not how I work. <laughs> that is not for me to do. But eventually those photos will come out. This is where we are. I mean, I know that he's in a good place, and I know that he's fine. I know that he's doing great. But what about all of his friends, all of his family that are here, and they're just going through all of this? And I know that it's temporary, but it's so very much right now. <laughs> There's just no reason I would ever want to hurt him. Well, whether you want to do is, is a different question. I'm just saying... I don't think you wanted to. <laughs> I really don't think you wanted to. <laughs> I 
this speaks for itself. I... It speaks for itself, Jody. <laughs> it goes beyond speculation. This is way beyond speculation. This is downright proof. But there's no backstory to it. All I know is that... I need a story or else it's just cold. It's so cold. You don't look like the person that would plan something like this. You, you, you're just not that person. I can believe other things, but not that. But without the truth, I can't paint another picture. And it's going to be up to the prosecutor to paint that picture. And if you want that prosecutor, and I've met him, and you don't want him painting that picture because he is good at what he does. I've worked with him before. And you allow him to paint that picture for you. It's not going to be good. It looks like you don't really uh, need anything. It just looks like, I mean, it looks like you don't even need a good prosecutor anyway. So, I mean, You're right. I, I have to maintain my innocence. I can't admit to doing something that I haven't done. And there's, and the, part of me wants to cop out and say it. No. Well. If you're gonna cop out, it's because you're telling the truth. Well, that's not really copping okay. out. Yeah, I don't want you to sit here and tell me a lie to appease me. That is the worst thing you can do for me. But back there in that mind of yours is somebody screaming to get out and tell me what happened, but you just cannot. He has done nothing but, I mean, except for some mean words that he said. I know. People have said worse to me, or just as bad. Except for that, he's never, he's helped me, he's given me money, he was selling me his car on the then why? easiest, then why, lamest Joey, terms why? ever. There's no reason why. It just happens. Well, I have more work to do. Can you give me a rundown of what's going to happen from here when you leave? Yeah, you're, uh... Like, just today, for example? Well, you'll probably be taken across the street to the county jail. Uh, you'll be processed through there. You'll be set in front of a judge, at least within 24 hours. And, uh... There's a warrant for your arrest, and the bond is $2 million. If you can come up with a $2 million bond, then the judge will decide whether to, you know, accept that $2 million or not. At that point, we're going to file extradition papers. Basically, our courts are saying that, hey, you have someone in custody on one of our charges. We want them brought back to Arizona or at least allow us to come pick them up. And that's called an extradition hearing. You will be given the opportunity to either waive it and say, that's fine, I'll just go on my own free will. Or you can fight it and say, no, I don't want to go back to, to Arizona. What if I say I go on my own free will? Of course I would go. Yeah. At that point, the judge would say, OK, she's not fighting this, so come get her. And then we would go. What if I did fight? Then what happens? Then you would have a hearing. Oh. Like a little trial. So it just Not delays a trial, the inevitable, basically. It delays it. And costs people taxpayers money. And then you'll be transfer, uh, transferred uh, transferred over to the Maricopa County Jail in Phoenix. And then you'll start your court proceedings there. And, um... I've these... already filed these charges. It went to a grand jury, and a grand jury indicted you. So it's all public now? It's public record. So does everyone know? If somebody goes on and checks public record, they can check it. 
and they would come up with an indictment against you for murder. But it's going to be on the news tonight? We don't report anything to the news. Has his family called today? No. They don't even know that I'm talking to you. But they've been calling every day? Every day. Are you going to talk to them? I talk to them every day. How would you feel if your little brother or little sister was killed? I've been wanting to call every day, too. I didn't want to look obsessive. So I just tried to limit it to once a week. <laughs> Will I be able to see my family before it comes? I don't know. Can I don't I know what I don't mom? know what their procedures are here at this jail in this county. Um, can I talk to somebody <clears throat> about my affairs that need to be taken care of? You'll have to do it over the phone or they'll have to come visit you. I don't know. I'd have to get over the phone because the person that would take care of my stuff lives far away. Are we done? <sighs> How long is it all gonna take you since you already I don't know. paperwork? I don't know, I need to go see. The procedures are different here in California than they are in Arizona. I'm used to the procedures in Arizona. So I'm getting help from this county and the deputies here, and they're assisting me. So I need to get with them and find out how long it's going to take. Um, this is a really trivial question, and it's going to reveal how shallow I am. <laughs> but before they book me, can I clean myself up a little bit? You're going to be taken the way you are. I can't give you anything else. How soon? I don't know. Like five minutes, two I hours? I say within an hour. Okay, it could be five minutes, it could be 50 minutes. I need to go talk to my uh, associates here. And if at any time you feel like you need to tell me something, you just go ahead and approach me. I'll get someone to, to come take you. Um, you know, I'm not like violent and I'm gonna run. It's my Rika. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, do I have to go in handcuffs everywhere? Mm -hmm. That's just procedure. Whether you wrote a bad check or you're facing murder charges, you're gonna go in handcuffs. That's just the way it is. Okay? Okay, I'll take. Different precautions for different people. It's the same for everybody. So I'm sorry. You who do I ask when I can start making a phone call or two? Once you get booked into the jail. Do you have how many I can? Mm -hmm. uh, if it's like ours, uh, they give you a phone and you can make as many collect calls as you want. Oh. Okay. Okay. Let me see if there's somebody to take you to the restroom. It's not too urgent, but like. Ten minutes, everything will need to go. Oh, I feel like All right. Um, if you want to go ahead and stand up for me, as I take these cuffs off, um, just go ahead and put your hands down at the waist, okay? Especially these types of cuffs aren't the most comfortable. I don't think they're really designed for comfort. Nope, they're not. Okay. They're not going to give us any problems being out of the cuffs. Mm -hmm. Really don't look like the types that would. I don't think it would really be to my benefit anymore. Today's date is um, July 16th, 
and my name is Detective Rachel Blaney, um, and I'm here with Jody Arias. Is that how you say your last name? Arias. Okay, I'm sorry. This is just formality, um, and this is, you know, if, if I have to, you know, write up a report of, of what we talked about, at least I know word for word, you know, what you said, and there's no mistakes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's it's for your own protection or good that right. we record it. Um, and before we go any further, um, I need to uh, read your, your Miranda rights again, just to make sure um, that you understand. Um, you have the right to remain silent. Do you understand? Yes. Anything you say may be used against you in court. Do you understand? Yes. You have the right to the presence of an attorney before and during any questioning. Do you understand? Yes. If you cannot afford an attorney, one will be appointed for you free of charge before any questioning, if you want. Do you understand that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, the reason that I wanted to talk with you this morning, <clears throat> there's a couple of reasons actually. Um, I have been uh, privy to the investigation um, and uh, all of the evidence in this case um, and to your conversation with Detective Flores yesterday. And there's, there's really no... Um, let me say this, it's, it's obvious to me that, you know, you're not, um, uh, you're not our typical suspect. You know, you, you come from a, um, a good home, a good family. Your parents obviously care about you. Um, that was evident, you know, when they talked to him yesterday. Um, and you're a bright girl. Um, probably uh, more intelligent than you were letting on yesterday. And there's no question in my mind or any of the other investigators mind um, that you were the person that took Travis's life but what I need to know or what I'd like to know and give you the opportunity to do is determine whether you know you're a, a cold-blooded cold-hearted um, murderer who slaughtered this guy, or are you somebody that got caught up in circumstances and things got out of control? Because I think that is what happened, honestly, in, in looking at everything and all of the facts and in talking to people. Um, you know, it, it, I think in every person that anybody could be capable of harming another person. I think it's it's in our nature, and, and generally most people suppress that. Um, but I think given the right circumstances and, you know, the right time and the right place, anybody could be, you know, capable of harming another person. I see that on a regular basis. Um, what I generally see are the, you know, the, the cold-hearted, ruthless types. What I don't see very often, Jody, are people like yourself that are intelligent and spiritual and caring and um, so I, I tend to believe that it was an a, a incident of circumstance.